a second chance in the game. Hey guys, this is Lamar Bell. Uh, I'm the defensive coordinator here at Greenville University. Um, I'm headed into my second season here as a defensive coordinator. Um, and this is actually my second stint as I was a graduate assistant back here at Greenville in 2012. Um, and so today I'm just gonna share uh, just some coverage stuff um, that I've learned over the past couple years for um, our 4425 um, structure. Um, or a 335 structure, um, just anything with five defensive backs um, kind of gives you some flexibility to use with this specific coverage. Um, so with this coverage, we call this coverage read. Um, and, uh, and so as I step into this talk, what um, some things I'm going to discuss specifically um, are what our coverage responsibilities um, look like within um, this concept. Um, what it looks like versus three by one and three by two formations um, specifically. Um, and then uh, I'll eventually get on a transition to the board and um, just kind of walk through what it looks like versus um, a few concept, uh, a few past concepts. Um, what I won't have an opportunity to discuss is what run fits look like specifically uh, within this coverage. Uh, what does it look like versus sprint out and boot? Um, and I, I won't really get um, too in depth with um, coverage technique. Um, but uh, I'm gladly uh, willing to share that stuff um, for anyone. And I'll leave my um, information towards the end. Um, and so when we think about coverages and, and why we run some of these things, um, I have a, a few kind of bullet points on, on why we want to use the coverage read. Um, and so um, specifically with this coverage, it, it allows us to play essentially with uh, quote unquote eight guys in a box. Um, when you factor in the, the, the two safeties, uh, we're usually always getting help from either them or the strong side overhang. Um, um, with this coverage, there's a built-in trips adjustment. So I know for um, most defensive coordinators, there's, there's always a check um, that we probably have versus um, a three by one look. And uh, so with this specific coverage, there's one built in uh, with, uh, uh, with this read concept. Um, and then the last thing is that uh, it matches up well versus some very common concepts. Um, that we'd naturally see. Um, and so <clears throat> those are three big reasons why we'd want to use um, the concept read. Um, and so here's a picture of what it would look like out of a stack look is uh, I've always um, historically been a 30 front guy. And so um, I want to be able to just touch base on what it, uh, what it might look like with three, uh, three down linemen versus four down linemen. Um, and so as we um, just uh, look across this picture and, and just look at some of these coverage responsibilities, um, as we look at um, the corner, we'll start with the corner on the right is uh, our corners are in co what we consider quarter techniques. Um, or for me, I'd like to use the term man clue. And, uh, and so um, this coverage is more man principled. And so when I say man clue, the corners know um, that their eyes and their primary focus comes through number one and that number one receiver uh, would take them everywhere. Um, and so we, we do count uh, number of wires from outside in. Um, and so as we um, think about this specific look here, we have a two by one um, formation. And so um, you have a uh, number one receiver there on the right. Um, and then the number stops um, again once we get behind the center. So we got one and then number two would be the F in this picture. Um, and then starting from the, the left, we'll count again. Uh, we'll start from one. The S would be number two, the J would be the number three. Um, and so we always count inside, um, outside in. And, uh, and so as we discuss um, these coverage responsibilities, I usually always talk in regards to numbers. Um, so as the, the corners and they're thinking, I have to man clue number one, um, that's their primary uh, quarters technique. Um, and as we get to safeties, it's, uh, uh, they have quarter techniques as well. Um, and um, I don't necessarily use man clue uh, with those guys. Um, as they typically would play robber technique. Um, and so with their robber technique, their rules would be um, they are responsible for two on a vertical. Um, and so anything that gets past um, the linebackers is how we define a vertical, and they would be responsible for um, picking those guys up and at that point playing man-to-man -man, um, versus those threats. Um, and then we have our, our nickel, or um, as you can see, it looks like the dollar sign. Um, is uh, that position would play what we call a catch two technique or a C2. Um, and in that catch t technique, um, he is responsible for looking to collision a number two receiver uh, on a vertical. If the number two receiver um, goes out, it becomes a man to man situation for him. 
um, and if the number two receiver um, breaks shallow inside, um, he would just communicate in and in and, and now start to backpedal um, into that curl zone. <clears throat> And uh, out of this 30 look, we have three, three inside backers. And so far, Sam, um, who's the S in this picture, um, he would be responsible for uh, what, we what we call a hook three um, technique. Um, and so for the hook three technique, he's tracking, once he reads pass, he's tracking the number three receiver. Um, and the biggest thing is see number three um, vertical. If number three goes vertical, um, he's looking to wall off the number three. Uh, number three has to go vertical outside of him, and then he's gonna carry the number three receiver um, underneath in a trail technique. Um, and our mic in this picture, because um, we're not rushing, uh, we're not blitzing anyone. This is a three-man rush. Um, he would be a spy uh, on the quarterback. Um, and then uh, our will um, in this picture would be responsible for our hook two um, technique. And so very similar to the H3, um, uh, but instead of him now, his primary focus being number three, is his focus would be the weak side number two receiver um, and so he's looking to wall off the number two receiver, uh, keep the number two receiver outside of him, um, except he won't carry the number two on a vertical as he knows the safety uh, would be responsible for that. And so here's a picture of what it looks like versus the 40. Um, the, all the coverage responsibilities are the same. The only difference is there is no mic um, in this picture, so there is no, no one to spy the quarterback. Um, but all the other positions, their, their coverage techniques are exactly the same. Um, with both corners working a quarters technique, um, both safeties working their robber quarter technique, um, our nickel uh, working his catch two technique, and then our Sam working his H3, and our Will working uh, his H2 technique. <coughs> and so uh, one of the biggest uh, perks with run and read uh, the read coverage is kind of the built-in three by one um, adjustment. Is uh, we are playing essentially we're trying to get a three, uh, three over three um, look here, and uh, with some inside help. And so uh, the corner responsibility it's it's still the same. They're still quarter technique guys. Um, our nickel and our free safety. So the two guys on the strong side of formation. So they're on the trip side. Those two safeties. Um, they'll do what we, we call read it. Um, and so essentially they're reading what's going on between the number two and the number three receiver uh, on that side. Um, and so for the nickel, his responsibility is um, as he's reading, he is tracking number two. Uh, if number two goes vertical, um, he's responsible for playing number two on a vertical. Um, the only thing that would take him off of number two on a vertical is if the number three uh, receiver uh, ran in out. Um, so if the number three receiver runs in out, the nickel would come off of the number two and then the free safety would end up replacing um, the nickel and he would now um, rob the number two on the vertical. And so it would go back to uh, what our base um, look, what our base coverage responsibilities were um, versus a two receiver look. Um, and so um, those two guys are kind of comboing um, the, the, those two receivers. Um, and then the free safety is responsible for three on a vertical. Um, and uh, so if the three goes vertical, the free safety is going to um, he's going to take him man to man um, in that situation. Uh, we naturally want to play that inside leverage um, specifically so that he can see um, both the, the two and the three receiver. Um, the nickel normally would align up outside leverage of his receiver so that he can see both the two and the three um, receiver as he's uh, working his technique. Um, and then we still get help from the guys inside. So. Again, this is a we have a stack look here, so we have three linebackers. Um, our Sam is still running an H3 technique. Um, our Mike is running a spy technique on a quarterback, and then our Will is still running his H2 technique. Um, and so, um, if we get any routes that are shallow inside, um, the nickel and the free safety know not to chase those routes, as uh, they're gonna they they understand that now the linebackers will be able to take those routes um, and be able to rally to anything underneath. And so we get the luxury of kind of having guys match up on a perimeter, but also get the inside help um, that we need um, to help us specifically versus um, some teams who, I mean, who, who really love RPOs. <coughs> and then uh, out of a three by two look, um, <coughs> a three by two look, we will still read it to this trip side. Um, nothing changes um, for those guys. It looks exactly the same um, for them in a three by one, a three by two. Um, the only difference is now on the weak side of formation, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to pull the will over.
over some, um, and now he's going to play his H2 um, technique, uh, where, um, he, again, he's looking to wall off the number two. Uh, the number two goes vertical. He now transitioned his eyes to the number one receiver um, to find out, is the number one receiver sitting around down, or is he coming inside so he knows whether he can expand or sit um, in his window. Um, the rover, so that weak side safety, would be responsible for two uh, on the vertical. So he would take him man to man, two went vertical, and then the corners in a man crew situation uh, on the number, uh, the weak side number one receiver. So it would be the X in this picture. Um, and uh, if the X sat down um, and the number two receiver went vertical, the corner would communicate um, uh, any word. We naturally say China. Um, and so in that situation, um, the will linebacker gets a China call. That means he would now buzz out um, to that X receiver and the corner would now sink. Um, look, really looking for a smash concept would look to sink underneath um, the number two receiver as the rover would play over the top of those receivers. And so now we'll, we'll kind of transition to uh, working, uh, just drawing up some concepts on a board so we can see what this looks like um, versus some past concepts that, um, that we see. Alrighty, uh, we were able to walk through what those uh, coverage responsibilities were um, back on a PowerPoint. So now um, we're here at the board just to kind of walk through what it looks like versus um, certain concepts as uh, that always makes, I know at least for me, a little bit more sense um, after once I actually understand uh, what responsibilities look like. And so um, this picture here, which is probably one of the most simpler ones to kind of walk through uh, with this specific um, coverage concept is uh, just a very simple out and, and vertical uh, route concept. And so um, we have our number two receiver here running out and we have our number one receiver here running the vertical. And so we'll start with the corners. Uh, the corners are in that man clue quarter technique. And so um, this corner is expected to keep his eyes here on this number one receiver and he's working inside and on top. Um, of that number one um, receiver route, so that vertical route by the number one receiver. And then uh, our safety, our free safety and our, our nickel, they're both reading um, this number two um, receiver. As they're seeing this number two running out, um, this nickel understands that, hey, that's now my responsibility man to man. And so he starts to work flat just to protect himself from wheel a little bit better. He's not gonna drive it right away. He'll only drive it if he gets tension, which is palm off the ball from the quarterback. Um, and so he's just gonna work flat to make sure he stays over the top and then be ready to undercut and intercept um, any, any throws and to that number two receiver. And if he wheels up, he's responsible for him. And so he's gotta continue to run um, with that number two receiver. A free safety, he recognizes that he does not have the threat vertical. He does not have a number two receiver um, threat vertical and so he's commuting an out 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 communication call um, just to make sure that he's communicating here with the nickel and then now he just transitions his eyes to the number one receiver just to make sure that he's not getting any digs any curls or any post routes uh, if he gets any curl digs or posts by this number one receiver then he would naturally rob it um, but since he isn't um, now his eyes transition to the backside and he's just looking for any deep crossers that he could rob and look to undercut um, those route concepts. Um, and for our for our Sam and our Will, um, for our Sam specifically, his number three here, where I mean, where they've got seven man protection, so he's getting um, those guys are blocking right now. But since they're stepping to his left, he would open up um, to his left once he reads um, pass, just to make sure he's not getting any route concepts um, shallow inside. Um, and so although his three has disappeared, he now is looking for, hey, are there any routes coming inside that I could potentially help on? <clears throat> and uh, for the will is uh, same for him as he's keying in the weak side number two, which in this picture um, would be the, the pistol tailback. And so he is looking, again, eyes start there. He realizes that guy is blocking and now his eyes immediately transition to the number one receiver to see if the number one is running anything shallow inside that he could look to undercut and intercept. Um, and in this picture, the number one receiver is running a post, so um, he wouldn't have any, any immediate underneath work, and so he'll just continue to sink um, with his eyes, um, looking for anything that could potentially flare out of the backfield. Uh, and uh, for our corner, um, he's in his man clue quarter technique, so um, we would treat that as a vertical route. And so again, he's looking to stay inside and on top um, of that post route um, with the understanding that um, I need to stay inside and on top because if I do get help from 
Um, and if I do get help from any safety, that help is going to come um, underneath. And so I don't want to get caught in a trail position. So I'm going to be inside and on top of that route. Um, and for the rover, he has no threat vertically by number two receiver. So he goes through the same exact progression here as a free safety. As, uh, his eyes immediately go to the number one to find out is the number one receiver running a curl, uh, post, or dig. Well, the number one receiver is running a post. And so now he'll start to sink and end up directly underneath the post route. So we'll, we're getting a double team essentially on that concept um, so that we can help the corner out on the post as he's playing over the top and now that, that rover safety is playing underneath. Alrighty. <clears throat> and so we'll now transition to um, this two by two concept here below. Um, it's a smash concept here. We got it mirrored on both sides. Um, <clears throat> And let's just spice some things up there. So we've got this concept mirrored on both sides. Again, we have our corner and his quarter technique. Um, his number one receiver sits down. Um, and so he sits down on a five yard hitch, um, six yard hitch, doesn't matter um, how deep it is. He's going to communicate at this point uh, China, China, China call because of not only did his guy sit, but this number two receiver here is pressing vertical. Um, and so he's, gonna, he's now going to sink on this concept. Um, and he's going to make a China communication so that now that tells um, the nickel that, hey, I need to sprint and buzz to that route right now. Um, is uh, He's not looking for looking at the quarterback or anything as he needs to get there first. And then we figure out where the ball is afterwards. <clears throat> and so we have that route taken care of. Corner is now sinking underneath um, this corner route um, by the number two. And our free safety, this is two on a vertical. And so he's got to treat that as a man to man situation and he's gonna to look to play over the top of that number two. So again, we're getting a double team, kind of a high-low here uh, with those two guys. Uh, and we would get the same exact look here on this side since it's mirror concepts. Again, corners with sink is now his China goes um, to our Will linebacker, because again, he's an H2 player. Um, so he's got to key the number two. So as he opens here to wall off the number two receiver, if he can get hands on collision that guy, we wanna be able to do that. Um, uh, we understand that might not always be the case. Um, so he's going to wall him off just to make sure he can't break anything inside and underneath as everything has to go deeper than him. Um, and so this number two is running vertical. He sees that. Okay, now his eyes transition to number one. He should also be getting a China call from the corner. He gets that China call. Again, he buzzes straight underneath um, that number two, that number one receiver, sorry. <coughs> And then for the rover, he's reading the number two. Number two goes vertical. Um, again, that's a man-to-man -man situation for him. Um, and he's playing directly over the top. <clears throat> and then for our Mike, um, he's our H3 player. So again, he's tracking the number three, which is the tailback in this situation. As we count one, two, three. He's tracking the number three receiver. That number three receiver um, is flaring out, is running a swing route um, to the flats. And so again, he will start to open up in this direction take his eyes outside with him um, so that he could find out, hey, are there any routes coming inside before he declares on expand, continuing to expand over that flat route? Um, he's got no routes coming inside. And so uh, once he realizes he drops there, realizes there are no other routes, now he can flatten out and look to now play completely over the top um, of that swing pass. Um, and then, well, again, that's a pass that we'll give up, send a no cover zone, and we'll rally to it at that point. And then lastly, <clears throat> it's, uh, we have, uh, again, a, a three by one concept here. <clears throat> We've got a three by one concept here. On this side, it's, uh, <clears throat> we have our, our corner um, playing his normal quarter technique. And then we have our, our nickel and our free safety um, both playing um, that read it. They're, they're now communicating read it um, and playing that read it concept. Um, and so which for the free safety, he knows that he's responsible for number three on a vertical. Um, well, here comes number three and then we would declare that as a vertical as is past the linebacker. And so he will take that route concept man to man. Um, he has some inside help here and underneath from the H3 player, which would be a Sam. Um, and then uh, for a nickel, he's responsible for number two on a vertical. Um, and then this read it concept. And that's part of the reason why we call read it um, is uh, 
we're not guaranteed to get number two on a vertical in that, in that situation. Um, and so in this picture, number two goes out. Um, and so now this technically turns into um, what we started with, with our initial, um, with our initial concept is, is now it turns back into kind of that catch two technique for him, um, except he probably won't be able to collision a number two receiver on that shallow out just because of the nature of his alignment um, and he's too deep. But he would take that out man to man at that situa in that situation. In a corner, again, it's working inside and on top of that number one receiver. <clears throat> and our Sam, it's, uh, again, his rules are, hey, I'm tracking number three. Uh, number three is split out here, so we pulled his alignment over just a little bit. Um, and again, his progression goes once he reads past, is his eyes go straight to number three. Number three is pressing vertical, so he opens up. Again, he wants to wall off the number three, so keep the number three receiver, um, to force the number three receiver to have to work over the top of him so that the free safety can take him man to man. Um, and once that happens is now he just redirects, flips his hips, and now settles and is looking for any other crossers that he could potentially get from the opposite side. Um, for our Will, uh, he's still an H2 technique, and so he's tracking the number two receiver here. Uh, that number two there is, just, uh, is, is blocking, so he's picking up an edge rusher. Um, and so again, his eyes go from there. Okay, I have no threat, and so now his eyes go outside um, looking for any inside work from a number one. He's got to look for any um, slants, um, anything that could potentially hurt us with uh, inside, shallow inside. And so he's taking his eyes out there. We have a slant by the number one receiver. Um, he's expected to, to expand and sit in that window. Corners in a man clue tech, uh, situation. So he's working on the top side of that route. Um, and then our, our rover is in this situation with no number two vertical. Um, he's just kind of looking for work in that situation. So any deep crossers, um, um, he's going to look to rob. And so um, with this look, it, it gives us flexibility to kind of play around with what we can do on the backside of this concept. And so um, if, uh, if you have certain tags or anything in your system uh, where you can just uh, you can change what you run on the backside at any point, you have that flexibility with this re coverage concept is you can run whatever you like with uh, kind of these three guys uh, comboed on the backside. And so that's one of the beauties of it is we're not forced to always have to track the number three with the backside safety is we get some flexibility of whatever I want to run here. And so if I want to be able to run some uh, cover three kind of a sky look rotation, I can do that. If I want to run, um, if I want to run a cover two look over here, I can do that. If I want to just go straight man, I have kind of all that flexibility. If I want to blitz the safety, I mean, I can do all of those things um, out of this concept. And so um, <clears throat> this read concept just gives us a lot of flexibility, particularly it's, I mean, when you have five DBs on a field, um, you can do a lot of things coverage wise. Um, <clears throat> but that's all I have um, for today. Um, appreciate you guys kind of tuning in. And if you have any questions, um, uh, we'll leave our contact information with Coach Albaugh.